year, laptops are one of the most well-represented categories in our back-to-school gear guide. And for good reason. With the exception of the relative few who prefer desktops, for almost every other student setting foot on campus this fall, a notebook is going to be one of the most important tools at their disposal. And it's no minor purchase, either. With our favorite Ultra Portables costing north of $1,000 and even a decent budget model setting you back at least $500. And once you do make the investment, it's something you're not likely to replace for three, four, or who knows how many years. For the purposes of this guide, we are gonna focus on what Engadget considers to be the best of the best. Our philosophy is a laptop is one of the most critical pieces of gear a student needs, and it's worth investing in build quality, performance, and battery life that will stand the test of time. Oh, and don't worry, we have lots of picks for gaming laptops specifically. You're gonna to wanna to check out the gaming section of our back to school guide just for that. Right now, we're just thinking about the best all-around laptops, the best for most people in most use cases. So, without further ado, here's what we would buy if we were spending our own money. First up, Microsoft's Surface Laptop 2. Looking at the online store, it is no secret who the Surface Laptop 2 is for. Hint, Microsoft compares its ultra-portable to the MacBook Air no less than four times on its product page. Indeed, if you were looking for something similarly thin and light that runs Windows, the 13.5-inch Surface Laptop 2 weighs just about the same as the Air and is slimmer, too, as Microsoft is quick to point out. It also offers a quad-core CPU option, which isn't available on the Air, and the battery life was even longer in our tests, nearly 16 hours of video playback, all told. Factor in a comfortable keyboard, a responsive trackpad, and stylish, not at all Mac-like design, and we were hard-pressed to name any shortcomings in our review. If anything, we said we would have liked to see two USB ports and not just one. Microsoft's proprietary charging plug also disconnects a little too easily. When the machine launched, it started at $999, which is already cheaper than the MacBook Air, mind you. But as of this video, the entry-level price is down to $899, with a $300 price cut on every other configuration. Speaking of the Air, it was a tough call. But when it came down to deciding which Mac to recommend for our laptop guide, we went with the 13-inch MacBook Pro over the Air. With a starting price of $1,299, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is only $200 more than the 13-inch Air. They share a lot of the same DNA, including keyboard design, screen resolution, and port selection. For the record there, that is two USB-C sockets. But the entry-level Pro will get you faster performance with a quad-core CPU and a screen with a wider color range. That said, you can't go wrong with the Air either, which is a quarter pound lighter and has the same Touch ID fingerprint sensor now included across the board on the Pro line. However, it is stuck with only a dual-core CPU, and it retains the physical function keys instead of the touch bar, which some people might actually prefer. You have a hard choice between two very capable machines. But we imagine most people will decide the performance boost of the MacBook Pro brings more practical value than the Air. But wait, we still have a few more Windows machines for your consideration. Now, it's rare we throw around the word perfect, but that's precisely how we described the latest version of Dell's XPS 13 Ultra Portable, which earned an unusually high score of 93 in our review earlier this year. The notebook, which starts at $900, has topped best of lists since it first came out four years ago, and it stayed current with fast performance, a 12 and a half hour battery, and standard issue Dolby Vision HDR screen. And for those who have been reading our reviews all these years, Dell finally heated our feedback and moved the webcam up to where it belongs above the screen. That's right, no more awkward under screen mounted camera to catch you from the least flattering angle imaginable. With so many of our boxes checked off, we're left with just a couple nitpicks, including the lack of a full-sized SD card reader and the fact that some competing machines now offer more powerful discrete graphics. Can't have everything, I guess. We know, we know, we just recommended the standard Dell XPS 13, but the two-in-one variant is also stellar and different enough from the traditional clamshell version that we felt it deserved its very own mention. Simply put, if the XPS 13 is our favorite Windows laptop, then the XPS 13 2-in-1 is our favorite Windows convertible. We like it for many of the same reasons we like the regular XPS 13, including the HDR display and better placed webcam. But we also appreciate its taller 16x10, 13.4-inch screen, large keys, and premium design, which features more metal elements than the regular XPS 13. 
It is slightly more expensive than the XPS 13 with a starting price of $1,000 compared with $900 for the regular 13. Lastly, if you're serious about PC gaming, consider the Asus ZenBook S13. Again, we have an entire section in our back to school guide for gaming laptops, plus a couple picks on our desktop list, but we are calling out the Asus ZenBook S13 here because it doubles as both a gaming laptop and a more mainstream ultra portable notebook you can use for everything else. Inside these systems, lightweight two and a half pound frame is a discreet NVIDIA MX150 GPU and a nearly bezel-less 13.9 inch screen with a battery large enough to last 12 and a half hours in our standard video playback test. If you're shopping here in the US, you've got one basic configuration, a core i7 processor with eight gigabytes of memory and a 512 gigabyte SSD. That'll cost you $1,299, but there's also a variant with 16 gigs of RAM for $1,399. In addition to the S13's performance chops, we're also fans of its comfortable keyboard, smooth trackpad, and relatively full port selection, which includes two USB-C sockets and one full-size USB connection. Sure, we have a couple quibbles. The fingerprint sensor is oddly placed and the webcam could be better. But if you're looking for an ultra portable you can also use for some gaming, look no further. Check out our entire back to school guide for way more recommendations and hit subscribe for more videos from Engadget.